town outside Chicago, and there was woods right there. And my father, with his long, rapid strides, used to take me on walks all the time when I was little. And I began watching birds, and, and I began looking at things, because when you go out in the woods, you get, you train yourself to look at things around you. And uh, so that, I mean, when you're a poet, you're looking at things around your mind, I guess. I have four kids, and in each case, when they got to be about four years old, I began sitting with them and, and doing uh, poems with them, you know, trade off, me a line, him a line, me a line, him a line, or her. I have one daughter and three sons. And before they could write, you know, I was the secretary for the poem, and so uh, we did a lot of that. And uh, they've all taken to it to some degree, and especially two of them have taken to it more and, you know, have at least, you can say, poetry as a strong hobby of theirs. Rhythm. I mean, rhythm. People only want you to surprise them certain ways. That very same year Naropa came, 74, I began getting jobs in the schools because the poets in the schools movement had spread, uh, largely following the impact of Kenneth Koch with his Wishes, Lies, and Dreams, and other people as well in New York City. Every state suddenly had a Poets in the Schools program. We would go into the schools, and, and I'm still doing it, uh, work with everybody from preschoolers through high school. Uh, my favorite is, uh, you know, elementary school, like second, second grade through fifth or sixth grade. And I like other, group, other ages as well, but uh, it's a very charged, little, fresh, happy group to work with. You know, they can write by that age, but they're, uh, they're not routinized. I, say I go into a room of third graders and I have like 45 minutes to get them to be involved creatively with language. Uh, so I, I have a lot of writing ideas by this time, 60 or 80 or 100. Or, and so I pull out one of those and, and uh, just say in a very simple terms what we're going to do <coughs> and then read examples to them, mostly that other kids have already written. Mainly you have to talk them into, into writing in detail instead of generalities. The kids have, uh, I think, a, a, a fresh genius. Here's a sample of uh, an anthology of uh, kids' poetry from Boulder. Uh, I went into three schools and uh, spent five days each there doing four classes a day. And uh, This is called Would We Each Be a Universe? That's, I usually find the title for these anthologies in some student's poem. Here's a, another one. It was also a Boulder project of that same kind, three schools, five days each. Uh, this is the original, so it's color. I made, you know, cop the copies I made were uh, Xerox to the gray. And here's another that uh, was Boulder Arts Commission as well. And this is called Why Cats Have Skinny Pupils. This, in this I have case, three books about of and about writing, kids writing, and this is one. Teachers and writers in New York City published this. Uh, poetry everywhere. So uh, this has a, I can say treasure trove of, because it's not my writings, it's the kids' writings. I love to write poems with people, and uh, you can do it any number of ways. Just, it could be trade-off lines, or it could be trade-off three words, or it, you know, it could, you could scatter words all over the page. There's, you just do it so many ways. It's a good thing to do in classrooms, too, to an extent. It's a little dangerous because the kids love to do it and, and they go wild with it. But mostly what it does is open up options. Uh, little things like just discovering that this can be an intriguing series of surprises. In the old days, kids were taught to be grammatically correct much more than they are now. And uh, if I were a regular teacher in the schools, I would spend half my time doing drills 
with the kids, and half my time writing totally wild-ass things. <laughs> I think the, the important thing is to cover the spectrum of possibilities, n not just one way to introduce people to language, or not just one road, but a thousand roads at once. Friend of mine plays Red-Headed Stranger all the time. Admires Willie Nelson's all-purpose outlaw voice. I got a grant last, a year ago, uh, from the Neodata Fund to busk poetry on the Boulder Mall. <laughs> and uh, I actually did this during the summer, this past summer. I was out there 14 times for two hours each time. And I would sit there with my sign. And this is my sign, actually. I should hold that up for you. Um, it's right here. My basic sign. Do I have to move it back? or? No, this... that's just fine. OK. Anyway, I'd be there, put out the sign, and sometimes people would stop and say, write me a poem about Pittsburgh or whatever, and or something. I, I got carbonized paper from a paper specialty store and I had the pad of carbonized paper. I even had a straw hat that people could, if they wanted, drop dollar bills into. There was there were two girls, teenage girls, who came up at one point and said, We can't we want a poem, but we can't decide between trash and stupid ex boyfriends. So I wrote a poem that incorporated both. And my friend Vida came by and, and, and said, write a poem about the delights of growing yes. older. It was a wonderful experience because I was partly writing with people and for people. And then partly I was just sitting there as people streamed by. And I was writing then too. I sort of filled in with little informal haiku of the passing scene. It was, it was a lot of fun sitting there. You know, homeless people would come up to me and, and, and little kids, kids. And some of my birding friends came up at one point and we all sat around and, and made crazy birding poems for a while. It was, uh, it was great. Passage. When one is seen gliding through the woods and close to the observer, it passes like a thought, and on trying to see it again, the eye searches in vain. The bird is gone. Thank you so much. Thanks.